Hi, this afternoon. My name is Jeff. And I'm Chuck. Today we're going to do some cooking with Dutch ovens. For you, those of you who don't know much, too much about a uh, camp Dutch oven, it's a pot, cast pot. It has three legs on the bottom. Keep it off the ground so you can put the charcoal underneath and on top. And the lid looks something like that. It has a tight fitting lid with a lip so you can pile coals on top. Thus, you have a convection oven. So today we're going, I'm going to do spare ribs over vegetables. Uh, once they get going, it'll take about three hours. We won't bore you with three hours of video, but once they get going, we're going to jump in. Chuck's going to do... I'm making a, a mushroom rice pilaf and some, we're going to bake some egg corn squash. And then, Jeff's following it with... I'm going to do some uh, cornbread, jalapeno cornbread. So. I'm going to get started with the Dutch ovens. The first thing I do, a layer of green peppers and onions. I cut them in uh, circles so they're, they just dump them in there. It keeps the meat off the, uh, keeps the meat off the bottom of the oven and it also has, has a lot of flavor to it. You can see he's got a good layer of vegetables in there. Then I'm going to follow it up. You can use any kind of, if you want to, dark beer. I'm using just regular root beer. What that does, keeps the moisture in there. It also adds a lot of flavor to both the vegetables and the meat. And what I have here is spare ribs. I've already coated them with a mustard and my own secret rub. We're gonna lay them right on top of the vegetables, like that. And then we will add the charcoal and we'll begin the cooking. Like I said, it'll take approximately three hours and we'll check on from time to time, add new charcoal as we go. And hopefully at the end of the three hours, we'll have some good ribs to go along with the rice and the squash and the, the cornbread. Let's go ahead and show them how the charcoal is Okay, applied. yep. He's prepared in advance charcoal briquettes. I'm not here to advertise for Kingsford, but they're the ones I've found work the best. I have... I prepared, I think, 25 briquettes. With this type of cooking, we're going to put two-thirds of them on top and one-third underneath. These will last approximately 45 minutes, and we'll have to change them out and add some more to it. Well, the ones on the bottom, I space evenly around. You want to have the heat even on the Dutch oven. And the ones on top, when we get to it, we'll, we'll space them around uh, the top of the uh, lid also no big secret just on the outer edge kind of space them evenly that way the heat will go down into the oven evenly and cook evenly remember this works like a convection oven and you have to evenly apply the heat to it or you'll get hot spots which are only consequential if you don't want your stuff burnt okay there we go I'm gonna like I said, let this go for about 45 minutes. We'll check it then. We'll, we'll add some more coals. And then as we uh, go along with the afternoon, we're going to go ahead and add the other vegetables and uh, cornbread as we go along. All right. We'll see you in a little bit. We'll be back. I'm Chuck and Jeff. We're back here 45 minutes later checking on this. And I'll let Jeff tell you what he's doing as he looks. What we're going to do now... Uh, we're going to check, so as Chuck said, it's been 45 minutes. We haven't taken the lid off to check yet because each time you take the lid off, you're going to lose quite a bit of your temperature. And of course, unless you're getting close to the ends, you don't want to do that. So I'm going to take the lid off. I'm going to take it with this lid lifter. I'm going to set it on this lid holder just so uh, it's, the lid stays clean. Uh, you know this is very hot, so take it off. We're looking at them. They're, they're looking good. I'm going to add barbecue sauce to it. I've decided... Uh, to put it on after about 45 minutes. I'll do it twice. I'll do it now. I'll do it again later on in the, in the, we get a little closer to the end. Spread it all over the top. Use whatever flavor style barbecue sauce you like. Spread it around a little bit. And then I'm going to add some more charcoal. The charcoal that I originally started out with, uh, depending on the weather, is usually good for about 45 minutes. It's been that. So we want to keep the temperature going. And we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, add some uh, charcoal to it. I let it 
previously. Chuck, you want to grab the charcoal there? Yep. Some people will take and rotate the, the pot from time to time so you get to spread your heat around. Uh, I don't. Just dump it there, if you will. Going to put it on very similar to what I did last time. I'm going to put uh, a ring around the top. And then I'm going to put... Uh, uh, do about two thirds on top. I put 27 in, so I'm going to do two thirds on the top, and I'm going to do one third on the bottom. And that's normally the ratio, depending on whether you're cooking or baking, depends on uh, how the the uh, charcoal goes. The idea is to get the heat on both the bottom of the uh, the the material or the uh, food you're cooking, and also on the top. So, like I said, the others are about gone. So these will. We're going to spread a ring around there, even as best we can. And then I'll uh, go ahead and lift the pot up and uh, put some on the bottom here. A ring around the bottom here. And then we'll put her back on for about another 45 minutes. We're thinking about three hours total. And this will give us some idea how we're coming today. It's a little windy, so it may take just a little longer. The wind has a... Uh, Depends on your charcoal dissipates quicker or burns out quicker with a little windy day. So we'll go another 45 minutes, then we'll take another peek, then we'll start some of the entrees that we're going to cook later on. Well, we're about 40, 45 minutes later from the last time. We're ready to start some second course items. First thing I'm going to start here in a 14 inch Dutch oven, not because I need the volume, but I need the surface area, is some. Uh, apple uh, walnut uh, baked squash and it's one of the winter squash you can use either acorn or butternut or one of the other winter squash I'm getting a good amount of heat underneath to start with on a 14 inch one I do this a little different than Jeff I'm not saying that it's uh, that his is wrong I do like to put some in the middle to start with but I rake them to the outsides after and I learned that from Jeff So I've got my coals on the bottom for my 14 inch pan for the squash and these are going to bake but you don't want the pan to run dry so and you never pour cold water or cold anything into a hot pan I just put that pan on there so it's not hot yet this is lukewarm water all I really want to do is cover the bottom enough so that the squash are inverted in the water. These are acorn squash. They've been halved and deseeded. Invert them in the water. And you've only got about a half inch of water in the bottom of that. You see why I needed the surface area, not so much the volume. It would have been nice to get these in a 12 inch pan, but they just would not fit. So there are your squash. And I'm handling these without the tools because they're still cool. This is the last time you'll see me handle those without the lid lifter. Uh, because I'm going to put the power to them right now. So we've got heat on the bottom. We're going to put heat on the top. And I'm going to just finish those off. And Now that is a lot of coals to start with, but I want to get this, with that liquid in there, I want to get it heated up so they're simmering quickly, and then I'll back some of this heat down. Okay, after Chuck got his squash going, I'm going to start my uh, cornbread. I've got some coals going here. I'll dump them on the uh, my board here. I put some bacon in the bottom of my pan to get started. 
because otherwise cooking it it just doesn't get quite done so I've got a probably a, I have eight strips of bacon here going to be about uh, half cooked I'm going to dump them into I'm going to put them underneath the pan I'm going to put my corn mix in whatever whatever your flavor favorite corn mix is I have it pre-mixed up put that right on top of the bacon it's corn corn meal or cornbread I also have some jalapeno peppers in it just to kind of give it a a little bit of flavor I'll put it there then we'll put some coals on top this will take about uh, 45 minutes we'll check it if it's done we'll dump a little bit more cheese on the bottom of it and we'll have our cornbread ready so Chuck said handle these lids when they're cold when they're hot definitely uh, some type of lid lifter or they will burn your fingers here again I'm going to put my coals around so I put some of the heat on top so it has about a third of the charcoal on the bottom and two-thirds on the on the top with any luck we'll have all four of our items done at the same time here in about uh, about an hour and 15 20 minutes that'll take more than a little luck yeah that'll take a lot of luck that's true otherwise we'd be eating in uh, uh, segments okay the cornbread's there my ribs are still going they have about here again about an hour hour and 15 hour and 20 minutes to go and that's kind of the, when we want everything else to be done okay it's Chuck back starting uh, my second dish uh, we've got the acorn squash in the 14 inch pan on the bottom um, for a while I'm going to be able to stack these two because I need a lot of heat on the top of the bottom pan and I also need a lot of heat on the bottom of the top pan. But after it gets going a while this is not going to work, we're going to have to unstack them. Right now I've got a, uh, this is my rice mushroom uh, pilaf and I've got a mixture of wild rice and white rice here and we're trying to superheat about a quarter cup of butter and fry this uncooked rice just enough to brown it. So that takes a lot of heat. And we've got a good bit of heat on there. Again, this lid has not had any coals on it yet, so I am using my fingers. I'm gonna fry that rice a little bit. Okay, uh, it's Chuck, I'm back uh, working my rice uh, recipe what I've done we were trying to power heat the butter and brown the raw rice just a little bit it adds a little bit of flavor uh, I'll footnote my wife on that she taught me that so this has been on I don't know maybe eight nine minutes doesn't quite have the heat I need on the bottom of it but it's working good enough so to that rice We're going to add a chopped sweet onion. And you're going to continue to let that sear a little bit. and a small uh, package of mushrooms, small portobello mushrooms, diced up. And I'm just mixing it up here to get the ingredients stirred together. For our liquid and with Dutch ovens you need some kind of liquid for them to cook. The primary liquid in this one is going to be a uh, beef broth, about one can. And the second to the last ingredient is and you can use whatever you like, whichever kind of cream soup you prefer. This is actually cream of mushroom. And last but certainly not least, pepper, lots of pepper.
That ought to be enough. Let me check my list. We don't want to forget anything. Sweet black pepper, butter, broth, mushrooms, and rice. Okay, we want to mix this all together. The mushroom soup is thick, so you want to make sure that that breaks down and dissolves in the broth. And you get it, the pepper stirred in. Once you're satisfied that it is properly mixed, we're going to put the lid on it. put the coals that we've been cooking here on top. Again, I probably have more coals on here than it would be normally recommended to get 350 degrees, but I'm trying to get all that liquid up to temperature first and then I will back down to the appropriate count. Thank you. Okay, after these squash have been on for 45 minutes, they got done a little faster than I normal, normally get them, we're going to add the final ingredients. Now they were upside down in the water, now we've turned them back up so that they're cupped up and we're putting brown sugar. A little bit and it's up to you how you like them. If you like, my brother says I ruin them with too much sugar, but I like them. and butter, just a chunk, and top it off with some diced apples. Finally, some chopped walnuts. Wait a minute, that isn't the finally. I have one more. And pop off that brown sugar with a little maple syrup. on top to melt that since those squash are more than done. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and check my ribs here to see how they're coming along and add some barbecue sauce. Check the temperature to make sure they're up to what you should be safe to eat. We're up to 175 so we're good there. Add the last layer of barbecue sauce and let this go for about a half hour or so and we should be done. This is my pan on top of his, keeping the heat going. I'll get it out of his way. Okay. We'll check back here in a few minutes on the cornbread, and uh, we should be good to go. I've got the squash off the bottom heat with heat just on the top, melting the sugar and the butter, and they should be ready when the rest of the food is. Okay. Got one last item to put on, and we'll be done with uh, pretty much everything. Just a few more minutes, and they're all four items should be done at the same time. I'm going to add cheese to my cornbread, and on the what is now the top will be the bottom when I take it off. About two cups, and once this is uh, hard and baked on there, we'll have the cornbread will be done, and the ribs are basically done now. And I believe Chuck's items are all done, and we're ready to eat. We're just keeping things warm now, wrapping it up.
Here we have the four finished dishes. We have the barbecued ribs. We've got the cornbread. And we have the squash with apples and uh, walnuts and the uh, mushroom rice pilaf. So now we're going to chow down. Thanks for watching.